Hi, Mighty Mommy here, and I'm ready to share some quick and dirty parenting tips with you that will help make your life as a parent a little bit easier and a lot more fun. I'm your host, Cheryl Butler. Last week, I invited a new neighbor over for coffee while our kids were at school. As I find with most of my friends who are parents, we never lack for topics to discuss because of our common ground of children and parenting. Though I have six more kids than my new neighbor does, we shared many of the same concerns, challenges, and fun-loving stories in regards to raising a family. Best of all, we shared ideas that have made a positive difference in our kids' lives. So today, Mighty Mommy is going to list eight of her best tips that can help you become a more clever parent. Clever tip number one, do annual job reviews for your child. Years ago, my oldest kids would play office in addition to school and would set up the family room like a business office, and I would join in and pretend I was the boss. During one of these playtimes, I gave my daughter a job review. Little did I realize how much she would love it and insisted we would do this for weeks later. That gave me the idea to do a real written job review with each of my kids every year. Around Mother's Day, I would write up some of the things that stood out to me that year about each of my kids and then seal the letter up in an envelope with a few dollars enclosed as their raise. I gave my two kids who graduated high school recently their collection of job reviews and they got a real kick out of them as well as enjoying getting a few extra bucks to do something fun with after graduation. I plan on doing the same for the rest of my children when they graduate over the upcoming years. Clever tip number two. Create a house care to-do list. Are you tired of picking up your kids' Legos, Barbie accessories, crayons, and more? My kids get one warning to pick their stuff up and put it where it belongs. By this, I mean I make eye contact with them, and I calmly but firmly tell them that they need to put their things away. I also make sure I get a verbal response from them as a confirmation that they heard me the first time. If the items are not taken care of within a reasonable amount of time, usually around 15 minutes, I take them away. They must earn their things back next by helping me with whatever jobs need to be done on my house care to-do list. No one wants to get stuck caring for one of our bathrooms. With five boys in the house, you can't blame them. Or have to spend precious time dusting the hardwoods where extra Pomeranian fur lurks in every corner from our little Gracie. So, it's not often my gang leaves their things lying around the house much these days. Clever tip number three, issue boarding passes for road trips. How many times have you had to face sibling squabbles and skirmishes at the beginning of a car trip? I get the front seat, or you promised me I could have the window next time, Mom. These types of sentiments don't exactly set the stage for a calm and peaceful ride, now do they? Whether you have two kids or eight like I do, Accommodating everyone's seating preferences can be exhausting, which in turn can make reaching your destination an absolute nightmare. Having had enough of these stressful situations, I decided to implement a system similar to that of the airlines. I started assigning boarding passes. I typed out a description of each seating position in our car, with the driver's side being side A and the passenger side being side B. For example, in our SUV, we have three rows of seating. Therefore, one of the boarding passes reads, Driver's Side A, Middle Row, Window Seat, or Passenger Side B, Back Row, Middle Seat. I glued all the different seating positions to pieces of heavy cardstock, comparable to those that the airlines use. If I know we're going to have a seating war, I issue each child his own boarding pass prior to our departure, and they know that this is where they are going to sit, no questions asked. I make sure to rotate the seats on a regular basis so that everyone gets a turn in their favorite seats. Driving is much more pleasant now until they start in about what radio station we should listen to. Clever tip number four, rewind bad behavior. In today's electronic world, our kids are growing up with high-tech gadgets practically from birth. By the time they reach preschool, most are very familiar with how to operate a tablet, a computer, iPod, and even home theater equipment. Because my kids are so savvy with remote controls for our DVD and other electronic entertainment devices, I decided to, to use the idea of a TV remote control to help them get a grip on their bad behavior. 
When one of my cherubs is whining or displaying some other annoying behavior, I grab an actual TV remote, I point it at them, and I say, let's pause and rewind until we're behaving nicely again. They instantly connect with this notion, and the majority of the time, they self-correct. I even use the rewind idea on myself from time to time, so when I get into a funk or something over something silly, I know to stop and take a breath and go back. Clever tip number five, prevent little fingers from getting slammed indoors. Pool flotation noodles are not only lots of fun in the pool, they can also save those precious little fingers that belong to your kids from getting smashed indoors. Simply cut a six to eight inch piece of the foam noodle and slide it onto the outside edge of the door. Now, when someone goes to slam the door, the noodle piece will buffer the blow, saving everyone in the house potential and unnecessary pain. Clever tip number six, prep weekly meals in advance. One of the keys to my sanity and success at being a full-time working mom is planning my meals in advance. Even when I was a stay-at-home mom, I relied on being organized in the kitchen to make my life as easy breezy as possible. Each year, I purchase a desk calendar with which I chart my menus at least two weeks in advance. This helps keep my grocery shopping on task because I know what ingredients I'll need for the week ahead. I hit the store on Thursdays so that I can spend a couple of hours on Saturday mornings prepping and cooking several of my family's favorite meals ahead. I choose a menu with items such as chicken pot pie, lasagna, mini meatloaves, and homemade mac and cheese. I prepare the main course of these menu items on Saturday mornings and freeze them to have them ready in the fridge so that on a work night, I just have to make the side dish and can pop the prepared main course in the oven. I also leave the desk calendar posted in the kitchen so my kids already know what will be on the menu and they won't have to continuously ask me, Hey mom, what's for dinner? Clever tip number seven, do not disturb. One of my favorite things about staying at a hotel are those lovely door signs that you can hang outside your room that say, do not disturb or please clean room. Several years ago, I decided that these important messages could just as easily be incorporated into our family life as well. I made a set of our very own with not only the two just mentioned, but others such as one for our home's front door that states whether or not my kids are available to play with their friends, particularly great for during the homework time, and one to hang on the garage door that says, please take out the trash, and even one for the family room door that says, Molly needs a walk today. That would be our lovable Black Lab. The messages are endless, really, and very effective for helping to give gentle reminders to your family, even when you're not there. Clever tip number eight, color code bath towels. Because we've got a large family, we seem to always run out of bath towels. No matter how many times I wash, dry, and fold towels, within a day or two, the hamper would once again be full. I don't mind laundering towels that need it, but many times my kids will just pull one out and dry their face or their hands and then throw it into the dirty laundry. To solve this dilemma, I decided to color code each of my eight kids with their own towels. I bought each kid five towels and assigned them each a color. They now have to care for these towels properly, as in not throwing them into the laundry just because they might be slightly damp. And if they don't, I know whose towel it is because of the color. And I know what you're thinking. What if someone borrows someone's towel? I thought of that too. In the beginning, when the kids were getting used to the system, everyone kept their own towels in a storage area in their bedrooms to avoid any borrowing from the family linen closet. Now, several years later, it's an automatic habit for each kid to use its own color. How have you become a more clever parent? I'd love it if you'd share your ideas in the comment section at quickanddirtytips.com slash mighty-mommy or post your ideas on the Mighty Mommy Facebook page. You can also connect with me on Twitter at Mighty Mommy or email me at mommy at quickanddirtytips.com. Visit my family-friendly boards at pinterest.com slash mightymommyqdt where I continually update my selections. Until next time, everyone, happy parenting! <laughs>